heaven. We thank the Lord God in heaven that has given us the power and the, and the opportunity to be here once again to speak to his children. May you be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Um, for us to start this ministration, and it's going to be in twofold. Redeeming time. The grace. Redeeming time. Praise the Lord. And and to walk, that is, for God in heaven to give us the grace for fullness, or to, to have access to his fullness of spirit, that is, seeking God for the fullness of the spirit. Praise the Lord. You're redeeming your time in order for you to seek God for the fullness of the spirit, such that your life will have a wonderful outcome. Praise the Lord. In life, there's no one that does not want to be successful. Everybody wants to be successful. Even the poor are still hoping that they want to be successful. But God gives us the same time, the same hour, the same second, the same minutes. But how are you spending your one? Determines how far you go in life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. From verse one, say, therefore, be imitators of God as a dear children. There is no way and there is no other means to redeem your time that can be compared to be an imitator of God as a dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. We've, we've read this chapter, this chapter before. In redeeming your time, you want to be Christ-like. At any point in time that you decide, don't let it be too late. The Bible made us to know that seek God while he's near. He's very close. Seek God while he's near. It means also that when you also are agile to be used by him, he redeems your time. Example of people that he redeemed their time in the Bible, we can talk of um, our father uh, Abraham at the age that all hope already disappeared for them to have a lineage or to have offspring. God redeemed time for them. But there's something that was that we, we ought to understand about Father Abraham. He was working to be like God. He feared God. He wanted to Hence, he was able to see God when God come near to him. Are you getting it now? If you want time to be redeemed for you, you need to be Christ-like. Abraham was, a, was an example of imitator of God as his children. He is always in our way of God is always in awe of God. You try to be in all of God and he will redeem time for you. He did it for that. You can't dispute that. You can't challenge that. It is right there in the book of Genesis. But we don't want to go to that. 
what we want to speak about is you living Christ-like such that your time will not be wasted. The Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 is making the best use of, of the time because the days are evil. Anything in the day is from the moment you are able to walk. In fact, okay, let us take it stepwise. From the moment a child is born, he faces the, the, the day's obstacles, the day's challenges. Remember, a child that just been born cannot feed him or herself. That's a challenge. So he needs or she needs the help of the parents to feed him, to carry the food, not even when he can see or she can see the food on the table, but for him to be able to eat that food is a challenge. And those kind of challenges of the days are there from the beginning of man's life to the end of man's life. But how did you redeem that as you are growing up, you start learning. A child start learning because he needs or she needs to know how to carry the feeding bottle. The mothers in, that is listening to me will be we can testify to that. Even some of the male that are so rich that they don't see their children, they don't know how their children grow up. They can't testify to that. And, and from trying to learn how to hold the food in bottle, then it is also now a challenge to walk without falling. So a child will try and stand up and we realize that he or she does not know what to do and then start grabbing things to hold and keep himself or herself upright. Because he sees that people are walking around, even the children that are not, I mean, they are above him or her, they are moving around, he too wants to aspire to do that. And then he start running up and down with them. He start taking one step. You see the joy when the mother sees their children, taking one step, two step, three steps. They are making time for themselves to catch up with the, with the days. You understand now? Likewise, you also, you see that, oh, this child is now working. Oh, you are very happy. Then you start equipping the child with all manners of things to help him to be able to work properly. What do you do? You're preparing. You move the tables away. You move everything aside. You are guiding him or her so that he doesn't fall or bang his head against anything. You are preparing ways for him to grow. At that particular time, all the child wants to do is to aspire to be like his siblings or to be like his mother or to be like his father that are walking up and down. Praise the Lord. Remember, therefore, be an imitator of God as a dear children. The child just wants to imitate the father, want to imitate the mother in order to be able to walk alongside with them. Then they grew up a little bit. Then it is now a challenge of how to go to school or where are they going? The question, he will question himself, where is my mom always going in the morning? Where is my dad always going in the morning? Then it occurs to him that, oh, they go to work. What do they go to work to do? Oh, they go to work and look for surviving, look for survival. What they can do to survive the surviving spirit setting. To be able to look after themselves. Brethren, then he started learning how to make the best use of time. And that is where they get confused. How to make best use of time. Because the days are evil, but they did not know 
what next to to do that is where the parent comes in to start guiding them and my son that is why you cannot despise the word of your chief, of your parents because they are ahead of you they have passed through what you've passed through and the same thing that God looks at us, he sees or he knows the beginning from the end. He knows the end from the beginning. And he is constantly telling us that I am very close to you. The way you are going, I have seen where you are going to end. My son, my daughter, be an imitator of me that you can see, you can have my eyes, you can have my spirit in you, that you will be able to redeem your days. Praise the Lord. David in the book of Psalm 90, verse 12 says that, so teach us to number our days that we may get the heart of wisdom. Wisdom to do what? He, David as <laughs> David is one of the, one, how can I say? Very courageous. Talented walking without looking back and so passionate with whatever he does does not does not want to offend god in any way whatsoever but this is the person that is still all of us we know at the story of david but he still praying to god and saying teach us to number our days such that we will not useless the days. We will not just waste time and waste the day. Every day that you are wasting, you can regain them back if God did not redeem them back for you. Hello? You cannot sit down and fold your arms and you say that things are going to happen without things, I mean, without you stepping out and redeeming the days for yourself, the same time that is given to the rich one is the same time that is given to the poor. It is the same rain that rain on the sugar cane that rain on bitter leaves, brethren. Then you will now see that when people now, the time has passed beyond them and they are confused, they don't know what to do, then they start they start thinking that, oh, that is where the spirit of jealousy is set in. That is where they will now be thinking, oh, it is one person that is doing me. It is one person that is doing this to me. No, no, sir, no, man. There is still time. There is still time. What do you need to do? You, you need to walk in the wisdom of God. You walk in the wisdom of God. Sit, sit tight and walk. if you are able to ask yourself, what is my calling? What does God want me to do? Then you will be able to answer yourself all those questions. Prayer without work is zero. Faith without a step is a failure. You need to do something. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. We are having a small disturbance there. Um, 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 to... Praise the Lord. Praise God. Sorry about that. Um, I think the person did not know that um, they are not muted. And that's what happened there. Sorry about that. So, in the book of Colossians 4, verse 5, so walk in the wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Make the best use of your time all the time, and you will be successful in life. 
Look carefully. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord to your life is. Understanding the will of God, that is for you to know the acceptable and unacceptable will of God for your life. It is very, very important and is a very good step for you to know how to redeem time. You have been doing something and it's not functioning. Re 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 reverse and then reflect. Retrace your track of what you are doing and make amendment. It is never too late for anyone that you know that you are not right standing with God. People have been in, up in a position whereby they can, they can get money and then they start stashing money in the, in the, in the cellar for, 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 I don't know how long, or even the money start getting rotten in the in the in, in the in the in the store in the storage where they kept the money because it was not a genuine or it was not obtained in a rightful way hence they cannot declare those kind of money and then they stash them away like that but people other people are suffering other people are there how they are praying and, and hoping that somebody will help them you are in the position to help, but you are not doing that. And you want your children to receive help. Oh, you change your heart. Because for every one of us, we have purpose on the surface of the, of the planet. God created you to have that particular thing, that, that riches, that wealth, that position you are today. God placed you there, not for you alone, for your family. God gives you strength to look after your home. Don't turn the glory of God upside down. God created you, brings you into a family for you to be an exemplary child in that home, not the one that will bring disgrace to the home. You cannot be bringing disgrace to the home and you forgotten that you are not going to have a child in, in the future. No, you're going to have the you're going to have a child in the you're going to if not a child, you're even going to have children in the future. What do you expect from your children if you are not obeying your parents and obeying God? That is what Jesus Christ is, came to teach us. And he always referred to the Father in heaven, that he is obedient to the Father in heaven for his lifetime on earth to be splendid and to, to, to be fulfilled, to achieve the purpose. Though his God came from heaven to come in this form and in this image such that he can show us how to comply to the will of God and the acceptable and non-acceptable will of God can be visible to us. Hence, we know what to do and not what to do. Hence, we pray constantly throughout last week. That's why I didn't post any other prayers because I want us to pray intensively on the spirit of discernment because in this year, we really need it such that we know the good and the bad things. But I pray that your prayer will work for you as you are praying it in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Ma, please, can you mute your, your phone? Because um, the, 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 the uh, talk that you everyone was hearing it when oh. you were speaking to the family before. Uh, well. Sorry about that. Please help me to mute it. Thank you, ma. God bless you. Ephesians 5. Say, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children 
and walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Praise the Lord. A fragrant what? Offering and a sacrifice to God. You trying to walk and being imitator of God is like you are sacrificing to God. That is, you move away from your wayward ways or the ways of the earth. Remember what, remember what the Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 said, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. But when you are Christ-like, you are imitators of God. That is, you want to do what God wants us to do. Then you will be able to have the spirit of discernment. So what do you do? What can make you to be an imitator of God? Or what can you classify as a Christ-like? The book of Ephesians also told us that. Say, put sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you. That is an advice. Hello. We you know last week we preach about the law against or the law of sexual immoral, immoralities. They are the words of God. They are the commandments that God placed among us that for you to be or to, for you to be my children, all these law, you need to observe them and all this conduct, I don't want to see it among you. Some people do not know that one of the most severe issues or problem that God has with mankind that makes him most of the time to even regret creating mankind. Yes, some people will say, really? Does God actually regret? Oh, yes. In the book of Genesis, go there and read it. He regretted creating mankind because it does not work the way he wanted it to, to work. And some people are asking that, oh, why God did not kill Satan? Oh, he can wipe him. It's not an issue. But he realizes that Satan balances the equation. So he left him. Hello. Should I say that again? He left him because Satan balances the equation of mankind. How does he balance it? You know, our forefather, the first man, Adam, blamed God. Now, you won't see anyone blaming God. You will, ah, when they do anything, they say, oh, it is Satan, it should need. Eh, that's it. So the equation is balanced, is balanced now. No, because if, if all of us are to be blaming God, do you remember the cause it plays on his own first creation. He said that the causes is what we are still battling up to today, only because Father Adam blamed God. He said, is it not the wife that you gave to me that made me to sin, to sin against you? Is it not the wife you gave me or the person you gave me Eve that, you, that made me to, to offend you? Because before, you know I wouldn't do this to you. You know I, I always love you. you know I'm, but when you brought the woman to me, she confused me to, 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 to go against your will and your, and, you, and, and your words. And that is why God said now, okay, now you will have a choice. I'm giving you that, that choice. You make everything you are making, I will let you make the choice of everything that you have. I won't decide for you anymore. However, whatever you are deciding, make sure it is in alignment with my will. It is in alignment with my perfect will. You understand me now? An acceptable will. He gave us tax. So mankind now don't blame God, or we don't have any reason to be blaming God for every misconduct or everything. Everyone will be saying that, oh, it is Satan. Sometimes you will see that Satan will hold his own book. 
on the day of judgment of some people. I said that this, if, even when God's grace come upon that, Satan will contest. Oh, do you think that Satan have no right to contest? Who are you that Satan cannot contest? He contested against Moses' body. So who are you that Satan cannot contest against you? <laughs> so all of us, we need to be very, very careful because the things that are spiritual are more delicate than the things that are physical. That is why we are doing whatever we like and we think that we can just go scoff free. There are so many things behind the scene that are spiritual. When I mean, what I mean by behind the scene is that the spiritual things that's even when the grace of God comes and said, God said, oh, let us pardon this one. Satan will now arise. Says, Excuse me, sir. <laughs> At some point, this guy, he offended me because every evil thing he's been doing, he's been saying that I'm the one, but I didn't even know anything about it. So you said you will judge. Oh, yeah, let's judge this one. So and, uh, I pray that Satan will not appeal against you. When you <laughs> in time of judgment, <laughs> God have mercy. So let immoralities not be found and covetousness not be found among you. As a proper, as is proper among sin, let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, no crude jokings, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. That is everything that you are doing. Let the traces of thanksgiving be seen. That is when people see you and say that, ah, if it is not because of God and this man that made the story of my life to change, you are giving, your life is giving God the glory. What do you want to do with all the money that you are embezzling? And what are you going to gain, you the policemen in Nigeria and in, or in Africa, that you are manipulating situations and many are rotting in jail, many are being killed for innocent people. Are, there's so many innocent blood crying in that country and you can, you can see the way the, there's a tumor up every nooks and corner because the blood of innocent have been shed constantly. Innocent people, they are children of God and the government are closing eyes on them. They are, they are, they are not addressing that situation. Human being that God created, you know that they are, they, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are being kidnapped and selling their body, they are being killed, selling their body, and you shut the eyes, you because you too, you do go there to go and buy the part of human being to do one thing or the other because you want to attain a position, a position. Remember, remember, is not for the position that you are, you are, you are killing a human being like you for. It is not a permanent shift and say title, and you won't take it to heaven. You wouldn't when you when the person is dead, you don't, the, that position is not going to be is not going to be carried into the grave with you. So why, in the name of God, why are we not talking about this? Why are the pastors so afraid to talk about this? That the people can change their wayward ways. That. God will redeem time for Nigeria to be good again. And you, all of you are sitting there waiting for the country to collapse. And you, you say, because it doesn't concern you, you get the light, you get the electricity at every time that you wanted it. But what about other people? You condemn them, God does not condemn them. He plays you on that position of authority, wants you to make a difference. Please make a difference. You that you are a breadwinner of a, of a family, the firstborn of a family, check your ways and check what you are doing. Are you in the right place? Are you redeeming time? Pray to God. David prayed to God. He said, teach us how to redeem our time. So, so teach us to number our days that we may get what? that we may get a heart of wisdom. Psalm 90, 12, we've read it before. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the reason for that was to let us realize that making the best use of time will, I mean, because the days are full of what? Are full of evil. Praise the Lord. The days are full of evil. I pray that God will empower us to be able to redeem time. It will not be too late before our eyes are open and we can make amendment. Praise the Lord. Let your life be blessing God at all times. Let it bring glory to God. Let everything, the works of your hands, let them be giving glory to God. Praise the Lord. It is God that gives opportunity. It is never too late. Opportunity comes and goes. But it is Almighty God that makes it to come again. He uses he used that to redeem time for us. Galatians 6, 10 says, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. The opportunity you are having, let it be used for the betterment of everyone to give glory to God. Galatians 6, 10 says, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith, of the household of faith. You are from the household that believe in God, and you are chasing after the things of the devil. You are not bringing glory to that home. You are not bringing glory to that home. You are constantly doing things against your home. Do you think you'll be fulfilled? Check yourself. Are you now a millionaire since you have been doing things against the, the instruction of your father, the instruction of your mother. Have you, can you say you are fulfilled? No, you can't. But I'm saying that the, uh, the Bible is telling us that there is still time. There is still time because God has made our Lord Jesus Christ to remove the causes of the law everything you are doing that is not in the perfect will of God or acceptable will of God, you are only activating the causes that Jesus Christ took away, but he, he suspended it. It is not that he took it. You, you, if you go back and dig it, it does come upon that person. And that's why you see that things are not working. Why don't you check yourself? Why do you want to be a second class? When God has placed you, he said you are the head and not the tail. So why are you making yourself, or why do you want to make yourself to be the tail? God has made you to be the royal priesthood. So why do you want to be the tail? But when you now manipulate yourself to be at the top, if that is when they don't know what to do because it is not in the you are not you are not reborn. You are not imitating the, the, you are not imitating your creator and you are not Christ-like. Hence, you, rea you think, you realize that, oh, you are getting, you are getting the money and you are squandering it. You are getting the breakthroughs, but you don't know what to do with it. The opportunities are there, but you don't know what to do because you lack wisdom of God. Say so for those that, the Bible says, for those that lack wisdom, seek and beg the God Almighty that has got them in excess and he will bestow them upon you. But you have to come closer to him to get it. You cannot, he sees you, you know he created you. He knows your heart. You can't do like this. Oh, I'm okay. I, I will not do that again. Oh, I will not. I'm now a changed person. Who are you fooling? Do you think you are fooling the person you are talking to? No. God sees you. Uh, goodbye, uh, uh, there's an adage in our language. Uh, oh, 
oh, when I get there, I'm going to look after the poor. And you now get to the presidential post and you, 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 you pack aside the, 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 poor, the poor people or those ones that are looking up onto you. You are spending money left, right, and center. You want to, you want to get to that position. But there is no element of imitation of God inside of you. You say one thing today is another thing tomorrow, and you think God in heaven is not looking. He is watching every one of us. The Bible made us to know that a thousand years is just like yesterday. And like a watch that has just passed midnight to God. A thousand years. It's, it's just like that. Just like that. No. To God. You can't deceive him. Before you do anything, he already knows. But the one that it is not in his will, he won't come to you. To the, people are waiting that God will come and speak to them that, oh, what you are doing is wrong. No, 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 no. He's already, the spirit is already inside of you. You yourself, you know inside of you that what you are doing is wrong. Every human being knows what they are doing is wrong. All right. If anybody comes to me and say that, oh, eh, it's because I didn't know, I said, no, no, don't, come, don't go there. For anything you do, you know. Eh, it's because I didn't know. No, 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 no. You, you knew what you are doing. Before even you set out to do them, you plan. You say that. This, but you did, the only equation you are removing, it, you are removing God equation. Yeah, what I'm doing. And then when that thing now, uh, and then the thing now uh, uh, um, um, succeeded, you believe that it is God that gave it to you. No, no, no. It is not everything that is good that it's from God. That is another mistake that many people always think, that everything that is good is from God. No, 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 no. Not everything that is good is from God. Satan do give good things, and then but he give you one good thing, it takes 10 from you that, we, that you cannot pay back. The 10 things he will be require, requesting from you will, will be more difficult to pay back compared to what God is requesting from What is God requesting from you? Obedience. The only thing God is requesting, is that, is that difficult? They say, oh, the Bible is too, is too difficult to follow. It's only because you don't want to follow it in the first place. You've made up your mind that anyone that comes to me and says that, oh, the Bible is rigid. I said, tell me what is rigid then. The thing that is rigid, tell me. Is it because they said that you should not smoke in their M? That is, it is rigid. Go and see people that are shamed down because of, because of in their hand. Then you will know that it is very, it is very easy because you have not seen them shamed down because their mental their mental brain, their head as you have, maybe you, someone need to take you there, then you, you it, when, you, or when you see, and then you will know what people are telling you. It's because you have not seen, or maybe you have seen it, you said, oh, I am a, I am um, Iron Man, or I'm a Superman, invisible. or invisible, it can't happen to me. Uh, I'm sorry for you, <laughs> the days are coming. God is just giving you opportunity to change, to, be, to quickly change your ways so that your body chemical that you have, uh, your body strength that you have destroyed can recoup. You still have the power to, re to recoup, but it will get to a certain level whereby the tissues that you are damaging with that bad chemicals you are pouring in your system, by the time the, it will get to a stage whereby the tissues cannot regenerate itself or regrow itself or repair itself. And then you see them where they tie them down, where people are, they, they've been institutionalized. That will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Or is it you that you are embezzling or it is you that you are fornicating up and down? Oh, the consequences are always, they are always there around the corner. The consequences are around the corner, brethren. 
it, they are inevitable. If you miss it, your children, children, they are, they are there. Except if you don't have, if you've decided not to have an issue. For everything that we violate, God is, he says, I will visit the iniquity. He says, Moses, tell them that I have forgiven them all. But uh, the day is coming when I will revisit the iniquities of their fathers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we read the book of Isaiah, let us round up with the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. And then we want to see what God is demanding from all of us. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 12. Book of Isaiah. Isaiah 14, 12. But before we, we will read it from the beginning. Praise the Lord. For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob. And we choose and we choose Israel again. Praise the Lord. God wants to have compassion on you and I and redeem time for us. Look at it here. For God, for the Lord will have compassion on Jacob and we choose Israel again, which means he chose them before he dropped them. Hello? He dropped them. There's no one that God cannot pack aside, brethren. His own children that he, he chose, he packed them aside. And Isaiah here prophesying into their life again that, look, if you can move away from your wayward ways, the Lord in heaven will have compassion. And, 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 and he will choose Israel again. He will settle them on their own lands. Why? because the land he gave to them in the book of Deuteronomy was taken away from them. They were purged away as well. The fact that God placed you in a glorious home, placed you in a glorious position, placed you in a glorious um, um, job, placed you in a good, or give you a good wife, or give you a good husband, God can take all those things away and pack you aside. That would not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. He did it. He did not spare his children. And then who are you? That you think that you are invisible to God. You are not invisible to God. But I prophet Isaiah, when they thought they, when the Israelites thought that they are invisible to God, that they can now do whatever they like, they are, on, they are now in their promised land, that God, look, they can do whatever. They, God, God spoke to the heaven. And the heavens spoke to the, to the ground of their promised land to vomit them out, and they were vomited. In the, this, is, this is a prophecy in, 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 the, in, the, in the captivity. They are in, they are in, they are in, in uh, exile here. This is a prophecy in exile, telling them that, for the Lord will have compassion on Jacob, and we choose Israel again, and he will settle them on their own land. He will settle them on their own land. That is, the land has been taken away from them. Hello. Uh, your glory will not be taken away from you. Your land that God has settled you in will not be taken, will not be taken from you. The resident alien will join them and be united with the house of Jacob. The nation will escort Israel and bring it to its own land that is when you repent praise the lord when you are what that happens only when you make the best use of the time because the days are evil and when when you now make god you now become the imitator of god praise the lord just according to the ephesians 5 say therefore be imitator of god as a dear children when they decided to be imitator of God and is as a dear children, God redeemed time for them. Don't you see? I'm not the one saying it now. It is right here in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 14. Open your Bible there. 
we have been following the pattern and the character of God, the way he relates with his children from the book of Genesis up till Deuteronomy. We saw that he fulfilled his part and he laid down, the, he saw many characters that they are showing, which are not the characters he was expecting from them. He sifted them. The people that left the Egypt captivity were not the one that got into to the, to the promised land. And he kept, on tell, to, he kept on telling them, saying, remember what your forefather did to me. It was not that he, for, he already uh, 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 for, forgave, but he didn't forget. God never forgets. Contrary to what many people always think, whatever you do, don't think that God can forgive you, have mercy. But he doesn't forget because if he had, he was telling the children, 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 many generations after, I say, look, remember what your forefathers did to me. Don't go in their ways. Listen to me and do my will. Be a dear children to me. Be like a Christ, Christ life. You understand? And that is the demand of, of God from you and I today. And it is the key of redeeming your time. Praise the Lord. Verse 3. He said, no, verse 2. The nation will escort Israel and bring it to its homeland, which was where they were purged away because of their misconduct and their waywardness, because of their sins and their transgression, because of their, because of their stiff nakedness. They are telling you constantly, the way you are going is a way of destruction. Why don't you change your ways? You refuse and you decide not to go. You are not the first person. We are reading this one to you for an example that God dealt with this one you are not invisible to God. He called them. He said, I chose them. He said, Moses, these ones are mine. Go and deliver my people. The cry of them has gotten to me in heaven. Arise now, go to Pharaoh. Tell him that I want my children from him. He called them his children. Look, he still, he still, he still scattered them again. You understand? He said, but if you are able to come back to your senses, you, you, you did you start, you start imitating me and you start walking in my status. You start walking in my status and you obey my commandment and you are practicing them. This is what is going to happen. So the nations that you have been, that is all the wayward things, all the things that you thought that you are enjoying, everything that you think that, oh, um, I, it is because I am, I'm over there, that's why I'm, so you will get double. In fact, they will be giving it to you uh, uh, without you making any sweat. Then the house of Israel will possess them as a male and female slaves in the lands, in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and will rule over their oppressors. Uh, if you are ruling over your oppress oppressors, what else do you want? Hello. I said, when your when your uh, is it, they will make captives of their captives. When your captors now become your, your captives, what, what else do you want? It means that you have everything in abundance and everyone, you have been looking forward for freedom from somebody. The person is now looking for freedom from you. Those one that you think that they are going, Oh, they are making it. They will not come and be begging to get some scrums from you. Say, give me something. Give me something. You'll be like, ah. You will look back, say, thank God for redeeming my time. I pray that that will be your portion. I pray earnestly for everyone that thought that there is no hope in following God. Oh, there is hope in following God. He never owns anyone. He never, for those that obey him, he never owes them anything. He pays, he looks after them. It might be tough, but he will be with you at all times. He won't let you down. It will make you to fulfill 
your purpose on the surface of the planet. You just need to be mindful of him and he will be mindful of you as well. He will bless you beyond your Im imagination. That blessing you are chasing, we chase you. That is what it means here. When your captives, or when, when is it, they will make the captives of their captors, that is what you are bowing down to will come back to bow, bow down to you. The wealth that you are enslaving yourself to will come back and be serving you. Why don't we just understand this? And we are running after anybody. We are running after. Look, there is no amount of. There is no amount of visit to different pastors to different target people that we make you to 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 get what you are looking for. Because they will see that you are desperate. There's no amount of respect you are giving them that will make you to be relevant in heaven. It is between you and God. What are you yourself doing with God? Seek God is very close to you. He's very near to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's very close to you. He's very near to you. And when the Lord gives you rest from your pain, torment, and the hard labor you were forced to do, that is that you are forced to do because you are chasing after things that are not there. Said so when God now gives you rest from your pain, look at what will happen. You will sing the song of content about the king of Babylon and say how the oppressor has quieted down and how the raging has become quiet. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. Every saints that are ruling your life, I pray that God will break them today. Every covetousness and temptation in the realm of darkness, things that are making you to offend God constantly, I pray that God will break the bars of the, the staff of the wicked in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you. Ancient of this, we give you praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the adoration. We submit your children into your holy hands. Touch them, O oh Lord. Grant them the grace to know how to redeem their time. My Lord and my Savior, you are the owner of wisdom. Touch their hearts with your wisdom, O oh Lord. Open their eyes of understanding. Grant them knowledge to leave this evil world successfully in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus.